Good morning, New Beginnings. It's me, Pastor Danish House. Today is Monday, July 29th, 2024. Thank you so much for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I'm glad you decided to make me part of your life today, and I'm delighted that you're part of my life as well. Well, uh, it's uh, Monday. We had a great weekend here at New Beginnings, a wonderful time in worship and prayer. I have a fly buzzing around my head again today. I was able to kill a bunch of them over the weekend, and now there's more. So <laughs> it's just the way it's going to be. Um, yeah, so great weekend. Uh, preached on Exodus chapter 12, and uh, we'll be talking more about that as this uh, week's devotions go by. Um, it was a wonderful time. Also, uh, there was some controversy over, uh, public controversy, over the opening ceremonies of the Paris Olympics. And um, there was uh, some controversy over whether it was a mockery. There was a, a section of it which seemed to maybe be a mockery of the, the Last Supper, of the, the Leonardo da Vinci's depiction of the Last Supper. And uh, so Christians got outraged, and then the um, Olympic organizers said that it wasn't actually a depiction of the Last Supper. It was a depiction of the uh, Feast of Bacchus, a Bacchanalia, and uh, they pointed to some paintings that were in the Louvre about that, Bacchus being a Greek deity and uh, so connecting France and Greece. And then now there's some things coming out that seem to be as if maybe uh, they might not be telling the truth about that. And it's not really clear to me at this point on m at Monday at 10 o'clock in the morning if uh, what the truth is about that controversy, about the, about the skit that caused that controversy. I wrote a piece uh, on my Facebook page, and some of you may have seen it, and so uh, I want to talk about this just a little bit. Um, that it, it, The piece itself, a lot of folks really found it helpful, but some folks were upset about it, and I want to just explain it to you a little bit, um, what, I'm get, what I'm driving at here uh, about this uh, Olympic controversy. I believe that, and now this will be a devotional, so it's not just a <laughs> defense of Danish, but I believe that, uh, I believe that, Christians uh, have a, a greater responsibility than almost anybody in the world to respond to things truthfully and to respond to situations in the world uh, with a measure of grace. Um, we're living in an age right now in which everyone and their brother quickly takes offense and gets angry at any perceived slight. And I think that uh, Christians, many Christians, find that frustrating about other people when other people do it. But when we're the ones who offended, we do the same thing. It, it becomes a, a a delicious thing to get angry and to uh, and to be, object to mistreatment of Christians. One of the things I've heard a bunch over the last few days is, you know, let's see them try that with Muslims. Muslims will get back at them and. And uh, you know, because they know that Christians won't get back at them, they won't get we won't get angry, so they can offend us freely, right? Um, and I've read other people saying, uh, you know, this is going to uh, Elon Musk, who's the owner of, of Twitter or X, said uh, this is going to keep happening because Christians are toothless and Christians need to get back at those who offend them, and that'll stop these insults from happening. Um, and I just don't see that as the way of Christ, um, and so. Uh, that's my bottom line is I don't think that taking offense quickly, getting angry and striking back is Jesus's way. Um, Jesus did not come for us to do that. That's not his, that's not his command. That's not his, his example to us. Jesus was mocked and criticized and Jesus endured that persecution um, for our sake and called us to do the same thing. Uh, now, when I say these things, the, the verse that gets thrown in my face, and I want to touch upon, touch on this, is uh, Ephesians, out of Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 25 through 27. Therefore, having put away falsehood, I'm giving you more context than people generally give. Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each of you, each one of you, speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. The part that gets quoted to me is uh, be angry and do not sin. That idea here is that, well, the Bible says we can be angry in a non-sinful way. Um, uh, of course, 
it's said to me in this way without any context, right? Verse 25 says you have to put away falsehood, right? Speak truthfully with your neighbor, that we're, we're, we're members one of another with our neighbor, which is something that I think has been forgotten in all of this. And that anger needs to be brief, right? Uh, don't let the sun go down in your anger. You should, you should uh, let anger, uh, righteous anger should motivate you to some sort of action that you take quickly, right? And give no opportunity to the devil. Don't, don't stew in your anger because then the devil is going to come in and do lots of, of things. And actually, uh, not to stir up in your heart bad things. This, this be angry and do not sin is actually a quote out of Psalm 4, verse 4. So there's two places in the Bible, in Psalm 4 and Ephesians 4, where it says that being angry is you know, not always unrighteous, that there's, there are sometimes righteous reasons to be angry. Granted, okay? Um, grant that, put it over on the side, and then let's ask, what else does the Bible have to say about anger? And when you follow the rest of the Bible's teachings about anger, you need to recognize that we have two verses here that say it is possible within certain restrictions to uh, be angry in a non-sinful way. Then there's a ton of scriptures that are there saying that it's really hard to be angry in a non-sinful way, that most anger is sinful, that uh, that our anger and taking offense is not a, a, a helpful, productive, or godly thing to do. Here's just a small sample out of the one book of the Bible, book of Proverbs. Whoever is slow to anger has great understanding, but he who has a hasty temper exalts folly. A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. A hot-tempered man stirs up strife, but he who is slow to anger quiets contention. Whoever is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. Good sense makes one slow to anger, and it is his glory to overlook an offense. What? Wait, what? What? It's, it's his glory to overlook an offense? Uh, I thought we were trying to find a way that we could be offended at this thing that's, that happened. Um, well, no, it, it's actually a glorious thing to overlook an offense. Was this uh, production on the Seine River uh, at the Paris Olympics, was it offensive? Uh, you know, obviously, it offended a lot of people. So what do we do about it, right? Um, my question is, okay, maybe there's a cause for righteous anger there. So you're angry, then what, right? I mean, like, what's the point? Like, why be angry? And I don't, don't mean that in a dismissive way. I mean that in a, in a real way. What is the result of your anger? Um, what I've seen online is people posting uh, posts about how disgusting trans people are. Um, I've received direct messages in my inbox telling me how disgusting I am for, def in their view, defending disgusting trans people. Uh, one post that I received in my box uh, uses the word satanic and demonic like eight times uh, in a short little message, um, telling me how ashamed I should be of myself for calling Christians to uh, perhaps respond with a bit of, of compassion or respond with a bit of grace. Um, what do we do with our anger? Do we use it to insult trans people? I've seen posts uh, that are insulting the person who is at the center of this um, this display uh, for their weight, saying that they're uh, a, a, you know, a, a, a an overweight fat person, right? Um, I've seen people who have photoshopped with Burger King logo and burgers in in uh, in the person's hands, you know, things like this as a way of mocking them for being fat. Um, okay, so you're angry. What are you doing with it? Are you using it to say that trans people are disgusting? Are you using it to say, uh, this is foul, I'm angry, or whatever? What does the world see when they see that anger? Like, what do they receive? They receive the idea that we are dismissing them, saying that they're not worthwhile. And they're receiving the idea that we are quick to take offense um, and that Jesus doesn't want them. Right? Um, is that really the message that we want to send? 
here's what it says in James 1, verses 19 through 21. Know this, my beloved brothers. Let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. Uh, quick to hear. We need to be the people who listen. We need to be slow to speak and slow to anger. You know, our, our internet culture uh, wants us to respond right away, right? It's, it's critical that we express our outrage right away because that's how the internet and social media work. Um, what if we were slow to speak rather than quick to speak? What if we were slow to anger rather than quick to anger, as the Bible tells us to be, right? Um, we have to express our outrage. Why? <laughs> I, just, I just keep coming back to the question of why. What good is it doing? Because everything that we do ought to lead to good. The post that I made, my point in the post was to say that if this is a depiction of the Feast of Bacchus, uh, then Christians have a better feast than the Feast of Bacchus. Christians have the Last Supper, and the Last Supper is a better feast than the Feast of Bacchus. Bacchus, the Greek god of wine and uh, sex and debauchery and, and celebration, right? And it's encouraging you to sort of uh, do whatever your heart finds to do, right? Drink, eat, drink, and be merry is the kind of Bacchus approach. But I don't know about you. I know about me. I've found that it does not lead to true joy, true satisfaction, or true contentment in my life. I am an overweight man. I eat more than I should. And it gives me temporary pleasure and temporary enjoyment but it doesn't, in the long run, make me happy, right? It doesn't, in the long run, uh, take away my feelings of, of guilt and remorse. It doesn't take away my feelings of shame. It just adds to it, right? Um, when the Olympics are, if they're, again, if they're promoting the Feast of Bacchus, we as Christians can say, hey, Jesus has a better way. At the table of Jesus, your sins are taken away. His his sacrificed body, his shed blood, they take away sin and guilt. Repent of your sins, give your life to Christ, and he will take your sins away. Jesus is better than Bacchus, right? That was what I said in my post, which drew a lot of anger from people. I'm uh, saying that I'm soft-peddling sin. I'm not angry at these uh, trans people. I'm not angry at these drag queens. I should be angry. That should be my response. What if my response, and that, this is what I said in the, in the post, what if our response was, hey, come to the real deal. Come to the table that really satisfies. Don't go to the table of Bacchus. It won't do you any good. Right? That's what I, what if our anger motivated us to invite people to come to Jesus rather than to put up a, a block in their way and say, uh, you're just an awful person. Jesus wants nothing to do with you. Um, that's my point. Let's, if, if you are angry about this, there, there may be legitimate reasons to be angry for it. Right? I, I'm not saying that there's no such thing as righteous anger in this case. What I am saying is, what's your anger bringing you to? Is it bringing you to righteous deeds or is it bringing you to unrighteous deeds? And... Uh, you know, we as Christians need to invest every moment that we have in doing the deeds of Christ. Um, and I, I think that I don't see that happening uh, in the response to this event. Where is your anger leading you? Um, for the most of us, and in most cases, it leads us to sin. And that's not a, a righteous response, even to an unrighteous event. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for your love for us, Lord. And thank you that in your love for us, you invite us to a better table than the table of indulging all of our desires. God, I pray for every person involved in this controversy, those 
who staged it, those who were on the stage, those who are defending it, those who are angry about it. Lord, help us all to come to the table of Jesus and have our sins forgiven. Help us to come to the table of Jesus. Give us conviction of our sin. Help us, give us, help us to know that we, we need Jesus uh, because Jesus is the only one who's ever lived, who has, uh, who is righteous in all of his emotions, including his anger. God, I pray that you would help us to be slow to speak, slow to condemn, slow to anger, and quick to mercy and forgiveness, and quick to invitation, saying to people, come, come, come to the table of Jesus. I don't believe if we're angry, they'll want to come join us at the table. So help us, Lord, to, uh, to invite people with joy to the table of the Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hey, thank you so much for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I love you, New Beginnings. I look forward to talking with you again tomorrow.